welcome to the national flag raising and citizenship ceremony here on the shores of beautiful Lake Burley Griffin in our nation's capital, Canberra. I'm Stephanie Brands and it's a great pleasure to be here with you today. What a fitting way to begin the celebrations on our national day as we raise our flag and welcome new citizens to the Australian community. We begin now with the Federation Guard led by the Royal Australian Navy Band taking up their position on parade. Indeed they are. Thank you so much, Stephanie Brands. Hello, Australia. I'm Adam Spencer, joined here in Canberra on this magnificent Australia Day by Tim Supomasam, one of Australia's leading political philosophers, board member of the National Australia Day Council, and since we last spoke on this day last year, has been appointed Race Discrimination Commissioner. Happy Australia Day, Tim, and congratulations on your appointment. Thanks very much, Adam, and a happy Australia Day to you and to our viewers today. It's always a pleasure to ask you on January the 26th. What, what does Australia Day mean to you, Tim? Well, it's a day of celebration and reflection for me, a day for us to celebrate the great qualities of our country, but also to reflect on how we can make Australia a better place. And the people assembled here on the shores of Lake Burley Griffin are part of six million Australians taking part in events around Australia Day, some big some small if you're at a celebration of any size and you are if you're on the twitter if you like a tweet and you hashtag your tweet australia day the national museum today are curating a live digital exhibition then storing all those tweets and photos and images of the day in time immemorial as sort of twitter time capsule are you on twitter yourself tim i am as as are you i believe adam indeed i've been tweeting away madly this morning of course later will be welcoming 24 new Australians as they take their citizenship pledge and across the country they'll be joined by thousands of others. January the 26th, the most popular day to take citizenship. We're watching the Federation Guard here, Tim, and the Navy Band under the command of Major Andre Lamal arriving with the Australian flag. There's something significant about the order in which they're marching, isn't there? That's right. The order reflects the seniority of the branches of the armed forces. So the Navy is the oldest branch. That's why it's marching first, followed by the Army and followed by the, the baby of the ADF, the Air Force. Once they arrive at the point, they will then turn and reverse back so that they are in correct ceremonial order as the audience looks out across Lake Burley Griffin. We are hearing the strains of the Royal Navy Band, which celebrated its centenary last year, a year in which they travelled over 100,000 kilometres and played 250 plus performances. One of the hardest working bands in Australian show business, Tim. I have no doubt about that, Adam. In a moment when we break the flags, which flags will we see? We're going to see the Australian flag, the Aboriginal flag, and the Torres Strait Islander flag. I was reading something of interest uh, that I never knew about the Torres Strait Islander flag. People would have seen it before. The image in the middle, the you've got green panels, a central blue panel representing the sea, black lines representing the Torres Strait Islander people. The white insignia at the centre of the flag is a white dari, a dancer's headdress, a symbol for all Torres Strait Islanders.
drivers. But among them, you have tank drivers, chefs, marine technicians, air defence operators. And about 150 men and women are posted to the guard every year. They provide official services and greetings both in Australia and around the world on special occasions, on annual occasions and at one-off events. Lots of visits by foreign dignitaries. The guard's always there. Last year we had visits from His Majesty the Sultan of Brunei and the presidents of Myanmar and Mozambique, among others. Some people have been in this guard for a couple of years. Some are making their official debut today. And, of course, it's a signal in marking national days of significance. Australia Day, Anzac Day, Remembrance Day in Australia, in Anzac Cove, Villers Bretigny, Meningate in Belgium and the like. And some of the people in this guard may well be part of the centenary of the First World War and the centenary of Gallipoli next year as well. There's that smaller precision drill team who people might have seen performing at various events around the country, sporting events, events of public commemoration and the like. And I'll note when the Governor-General inspects the Navy band, last year, of course, was the centenary of the Navy. People will remember that fleet spectacular on Sydney Harbour. It's also the centenary of the Navy band. It was the 4th of October 1913 that the first fleet under the banner of the Royal Australian Navy sailed into Sydney Harbour and on board there were a group of musicians recruited from Australia and Britain at the time and they performed under the title of the Royal Australian Navy band so it too celebrated its centenary on the 4th of October last year. And uh, uh, congratulations on a splendid guard this morning, on a beautiful day. Thank you very much, man. Great day. Good morning, Your Excellency. We also have a band field inspection. We can't stand to report it. Very good. Thank you. Her Excellency clearly impressed by the quality of this morning's gun. I get the impression she's, uh, I think she's aware of the fact that this is the last time she will perform this role in this capacity. I think she's clearly, uh, in her own way, quite moved by it all. Couldn't be a better day for it. Have a little tear in your eye, perhaps? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, yeah, so we do too for you. It's been a fabulous happening there. You've got a fantastic figurehead for everybody. Thank you. Very kind words there from Lieutenant Stephen Stanky, the officer commanding the Royal Australian Navy Band, and noting it is the last time the Governor General will be in this capacity at this event. Thank you, Good. Thank you for your uh, marvellous service to our country. Uh, our uh, military bands make an extraordinary contribution to community life as well as to the ODF. It's a great job. At their best this morning. Uh, much love, Navy Band. Thank you. Thanks, man. Enjoy your day. Thank you. What a beautiful insight into some of the things that are actually said during the inspection of a guard. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand to welcome the Governor-General of Australia and also, of course, welcome to His Excellency, Mr Michael Bryce. Please be seated.
Now, that, of course, was the full version of the national anthem, not the abridged first two and last two verses that accompany the salutes. And we saw there what's always a spectacular highlight of the flag raising ceremony, the three Hawk 127s coming past for the aerial salute. Now the 21-gun salute being provided by M2A2 Howitzers on the shore of Lake Burley Griffin. I love you explaining this to me every year, Tim. Why <laughs> 21 guns? Well, 21 guns because in the 17th century when foreign ships would enter a port as a sign of goodwill, they would discharge all of their guns. And at that time, ships usually had seven guns. But on, on land, gun batteries fire guns three times faster than you can on ships. So as a reciprocal gesture, you would fire off 21 guns. Three times seven. Mathematics in action. I note when you see those Hawk 127s flying through, amazing aircraft part of the ceremony each year. I've not flown in a Hawk 127. I did fly in the roulettes, the flying spectacular stunt planes a few years ago. I know the sort of G-forces the pilots are going through in those Hawk 127s. Oh, ho, 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 ho. you really do feel it in the compression suit, I can assure you, Tim, as they fly back down Lake Burley Griffin now. You're a braver man than me, Adam. These jets have flown from the uh, RAAF base at Williamstown. to be here this morning. So to lead us in the Australian Citizenship Affirmation, I'm delighted to welcome up to the stage the Governor-General, Her Excellency, the Honourable Quentin Bryce. Good morning, my friends. I'd like to begin the affirmation ceremony by wishing all Australians across our country a very happy Australia Day. I always find it exciting to be part of these ceremonies. There's something very, very special about welcoming new members to our community and uniting all Australians under the values we share. I've had the honour of attending many citizenship ceremonies and I find each one just as moving as the very first I attended. I would like to officially welcome our 24 newest Australian citizens. Congratulations to you all. As Australians, we are fortunate to enjoy a safe, tolerant and peaceful society. Affirming our loyalty to Australia is a way for all citizens, old and new, to articulate our common commitment to our country. This ceremony reminds us to reflect on the privileges we enjoy as Australians. Also, the opportunity to recommit together to making Australia an even better place for the future. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to lead you in the Australian citizenship affirmation. Those of you who are not yet Australian citizens are welcome to participate. Just join in at the second line of the affirmation. The words are in your program. Would you please stand? I now invite you all to join me in reciting the affirmation, repeating after me, line by line, as an Australian citizen, I affirm my loyalty to Australia and its people. Whose democratic, whose democratic beliefs I share, whose rights and liberties I respect, and, I respect. and whose laws I uphold and obey. My friends.